Time to check out our last night here. Just got my invoice for it. $593. Four nights here. I would usually pick a much cheaper motel. This was the only one and last one available, so. Ouch! But we have the truck back. We got it back last night. If you haven't seen yesterday's video, you gotta go back and see that. We're gonna jump in the truck. We've got a load waiting for us. We're gonna go pick up our trailer, go pick up the load, and book it to Calgary. It's gonna feel good to be rolling again. Got everything packed up here already. I'm not even gonna make the bed. Right, Diesel? Garbage is overflowing. It's time to get out of here. All right, Diesel, let's go. I'm gonna bring him to the truck first. I'll take him for a walk first and then bring him to the truck. Start it. Oh, oh, oh there we go. Got my room key. Yep. But it's the first test. Let's go see if the truck will start this morning. So starting the truck today will be the first time testing it since all the battery work was done in the shop this past few days. Oh, hopefully we don't have any more problems for a long time. Right, Diesel? I'll walk Diesel first. Priorities, right? This Silverado must be an employee here or something or something because it's been here every day since i've been here and i've seen it i've seen it leave like i've seen him drive out with it so i know that it's not uh just parked here that is a nice truck if i ever got another truck it'd be one just like that but like i was saying the other day it has to have the led front headlights with the bow tie mm -hmm. come on diesel hurry up and sniff away buddy I want to go start my truck. All right, Diesel. Moment of truth. What do you think, man? What do you think? <gasps> oh, a little sluggish. Okay, but okay. At least the new batteries haven't been fully charged yet. Okay, all the lights are going to go off. Eventually here. Come on. Come on. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. I have LED front marker lights and my truck doesn't know that yet. So it thinks that there's no bulbs in there. That's why it says that warning message at the beginning. It's just because I have LED bulbs. Okay, while well, we're running. Let's let this thing warm up. I'll go get our bags and stuff diesel and we'll be on our way. All right, everybody, so empty trailer. Hooked up to it again, we're ready to go and make some money, hopefully. Let's go get our load. Still no error codes on here. While I was in the shop, they also fixed my radio for me, which is really nice of them. I can get my satellite radio working again, finally. It's been so long, really appreciated that. Okay, let's all pray that there's no more problems for a long time. Oh, I gotta punch into my GPS where we're going. Where are we going here? We're picking up a load. Uh, that same load of like pipes and stuff, right? I hauled it like a month ago. We're gonna haul it again through to Calgary. You gotta wash it when you get to Calgary. Eh, inconvenient. And then we got a load of lumber that's taking us to Minnesota. And then we got another load after that lined up. So uh, we're going to be working hard, working hard, because we've got to go to Abbotsford, pick this load up in Abbotsford, maybe my GPS will remember this address because we've been there, sometimes it does, oh there it is, yep, alright, okay, I'm a little nervous. 
really can't afford anything else to break on this truck right now. You have 13 hours and zero minutes of remaining drive time. Alright, let's do our tug test here, make sure my trailer's not gonna fall off. The last thing I need right now. Well, she's hooked on there, good. Okay, good. Good, good, good. There we go. E-log officially kicked into driving. We are officially on the road again. Oh, what a weekend. What a week. What a month. Back on here. So now my truck was safety end of January. So it has a lot of, yeah, that's another dog there, Diesel, you see that? So we had a lot of work done to make my truck safe and roadworthy. And now all the electronical stuff and battery stuff got fixed. Turbo actuator got fixed. New alternator, new batteries. Turn right on, 96 Look, Avenue. Diesel, another dog on the left. You see another dog? Is that a dog? What's that? Oh yeah, these roads are not made for meters, trucks. Turn right on, 96 Avenue. Built the truck dealership on a road that is not built for trucks. Just barely enough room to scoot through there. So it's only about maybe a half hour to our pickup point, and it shouldn't take too long to load me as long as there's not a lineup. And then it's about nine to ten hours over the Rocky Mountains. We've got to get to the other side of the mountains. They want me there tomorrow. No specific time, just tomorrow, early as possible. We're gonna be able to test this truck really well. In 500 meters, pulling that load over on, the mountain. 200 straight. He interrupted me, Karen. We just got back on the road. You're already interrupting me. Look at the motorcycle in February. Well, March when you're watching this. Look at that. In Canada. What do you know? Oh yeah, if we can make it over the mountains, with no problems, that'll make me feel a lot better. For now, let's just try to get out of the city. I wish I could have a couple of pilot vehicles to get traffic out of my way. That'd be great. How much easier that would make it? So this guy behind him, in the Dodge pickup here, behind this oversized load, he's the guy who manages traffic behind him. So when the guy's got to make a wide turn or when he needs two lanes like this, this pickup is called the uh, the follow vehicle. I believe. It's like a pilot vehicle. I believe the pilot vehicle goes in the front. But uh, they manage the traffic to make sure that no cars try to sneak in where they shouldn't, right? I'm assuming they're going to be turning on to the same highway as I am. This van off to my right here, this white van, doesn't understand the oversized load thing. and he, He's trying to sneak past him. You see that? He's trying to do it again. He's still trying to sneak past him. You can't do that. <laughs> they need both lanes. It's getting all mad. As if it's, you know, the driver's fault that his load is oversized. You know, I don't watch him speed past. He kept trying to cut in. I don't understand people. Like, this guy's got flashing lights, a big yellow sign above his truck, oversized load. And he doesn't get it. He doesn't understand why he's taking up two lanes. I don't get it. Why is he so big? I don't get it. Why can't I occupy the same space as him? In 200 meters, turn left on 88 Avenue and then take the freeway entrance into 100 meters. So when you see this situation, if you're in, in a situation like this, just don't pressure them, you know? This guy's not trying to be a jerk in this pickup. He's just trying to make sure that no one gets hurt. Because if that van were to sneak past him and get in between, let's say, that oversized load in front of him and a barrier, he could get squished. Hurt or killed, you know? This guy's here to make sure everybody's safe, so just stay behind him. If they want you to pass, they'll make a lane clear for you, and they'll make it obvious that you can pass. If, if they don't want you to pass, they'll make it obvious because they'll cut you off and won't let you pass. Just don't get angry at them, they're just, they're trying to keep you safe. I mean, if the load is big enough, they'll actually put police behind there doing this job. But since the load's not that, that wide, that, that big, they don't require a police escort. These guys do the job then. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. I don't think anyone really needs to explain that to most people, right? 
some people they still need to they still need that uh, little heads up like, hey you, you could die if you if you try to squeeze in there you're not that in that much of a hurry right no matter where you're going you're gonna get there faster than if you die right just calm down Watch this guy, he's gonna try to get around the corner here. Oh, we didn't make it again, these lights are so short. See, the pickup knows I'm not gonna try to come up beside them, so he's not even trying to block me. He knows I get it. Must be a little stressful pulling an oversized load with constant four-wheelers and cars around you that don't understand life itself and constantly try to like almost kill themselves trying to get around you because they're so impatient It'd be stressful you don't want anyone to get hurt but it's almost like people want to hurt themselves they're in such a hurry they gotta get to Starbucks you know or Tim Hortons so I'm finally getting loaded here and boy have I got a story to tell you later 15 kilometers 10 miles from Volvo my engine light popped on again. I'll explain the whole story later, but uh, short, in short, I had to go back to Volvo, spent the day there getting a sensor replaced, another $1,100. And I just about lost this load too, but I called these people and the people here were so kind and generous to stay late to get me loaded. They're not supposed to be here now. They, they're giving up their time at home right now so that they can get me loaded. Really nice people and I, appreciate it so much it's, you know it's been a small break it's a small break to an expensive week we're now up to about ten thousand dollars that we spent on this truck in the last month almost well sixty six hundred or so no sixty sixty five hundred just this weekend on the truck so this is the load he's just loading her up on the other side there right now at the back i don't want to go too close to the back end right now that's where he's working Really nice people here. Really nice people. It's my second time picking up here. This is the stuff I gotta wash when I get to Calgary. All right, we're at Flying J in Hope, BC. We'll do a load check here. So far, so good, knock on wood. Everything seems to be working like it should. Ah. Oh. Still a little stressed out. Still a little stressed out, but we're doing okay. We have a load behind us now. We're moving, we're rolling. Stop in here, have a little breather, grab a coffee. And we're gonna head up into the mountains and give this thing a good test on the mountains. This is the big test. This is the big hill. way out of the lower mainland up into the Rockies this is the Coquihalla Highway highway through hell so far so good knock on wood if we can get to Kamloops we know we're good just gonna take it nice and easy not gonna make the truck work too hard, just as hard as it has to. Take our time, treat her nice, hopefully she'll treat me nice in return. This is the biggest hill leaving, uh, leaving the lower mainland where Vancouver and Langley and Surrey are. And then this high mountain road goes all the way through the mountains, through a very remote area of the mountains to Kamloops, British Columbia. Now it's a freeway and speed limit's 120 kilometers an hour, 70 mile an hour when conditions are good. But it's also a very high mountain road, so uh, conditions can get pretty, pretty crazy. Karen is about to get very upset with me. We're here in Kamloops, British Columbia. We're calling it a night here. 200 meters, turn right on Iron Mask Road. Absolutely not. We're turning left on this road. We're gonna go park at the Petra Pass here. Call it a night. So the snow is back. We're back in 
normal Canada. Let's see if we can find a parking spot for us here. It's the truck, knock on wood, still running good. All the lights are off. Whew. We made it over some big mountains, so tomorrow we'll do the rest. For now, I'm just gonna go and uh, get a good sleep. I've been stressed out, so I need to, I just need to get a good sleep. Relax a little bit. I don't need to grab fuel tonight. I'll grab it tomorrow. Oh. That's not that cold out. It's not, but maybe I should, you know? Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna go back around. I'm just gonna back up. I'm gonna grab fuel tonight. May as well. I always go to bed with full tanks of fuel in the wintertime, even though it's not that cold. I'm not gonna risk it. I got a lot of American fuel in my tanks, so I don't, I don't wanna risk it. Man, this place is full. I wasn't expecting this. This place is never usually this full. At least not when I've passed through here. Guess I've passed through here on all the right days and today is just the wrong day. Nice. There might not be any parking here for us. gonna be parking here for us. Oh no. Oh, none in there, none in there. This is awful. Well, hot. Hot and tarnation. I guess we're gonna go to the other Petro Pass. On the other side of Kamloops. Heh. <laughs> okay, well that's fine. Hopefully that one's not all packed also. At least we got our fuel here. Off to the next one. Well, Diesel, it was successful. The first day was successful. Thank God. So we made it here to this uh, petrol. On this side of Kamloops. The best side of Kamloops, some would say, I think. Let's open up the hood here. I'll quickly show you what I can, and then we'll end this vlog, and we'll do the rest tomorrow. Beautiful day out here. Look at that scenery too, eh? Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, so right here from what we can see, we've got a new alternator. Brand new. I've already noticed the difference big time. Bigly. I've noticed the difference bigly. It's been tremendous. Uh, this is new. We did this last week, and the connection down there. What else we got on here? Let's go around to the other side. We got four new batteries under the truck. I can't show you them right now because they're buried in there a little bit. Oh, our coolant level looks a little, not well, still above the minimum line. But this line is new. This cap is new. All that coolant is new. What they replaced in the shop now was this turbo actuator. It was seized, so that's new. That's a $1,400 part too. Oh, what else did they do? The, these are the batteries. They cleaned all of the terminals for all of the electric or all the batteries. It stung, this, this month really stung. But uh, you'll hear me say that a few times yet, but that's okay, it's okay. Pain is a good thing. It uh, makes you be thankful and grateful for the things you have and the good things that happen. Because when a whole bunch of bad happens all at once, even the smallest little good thing means a whole lot. Like the shipper yesterday, staying late to load me with my load. That meant a lot. It's just been a bad week and it's just nice to catch even a small break. They probably didn't even know how nice it was to me. And this is the freight in the daylight here. They're all tied down. 
Got my tarps. <laughs> Wait, top over there peeking out. It's been good. We got about another six hours of driving to Calgary and we're gonna unload tomorrow morning. This is where we're gonna end today's video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with me through these tough times. You guys make it a lot easier on me. You really do, and I appreciate all your nice comments and stuff. So let me know you're there. Let me know you're breathing. Down below, leave me a comment. Uh, if you think I could do anything different or better, let me know. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Click any of these boxes around my face here right now. They'll take you to more videos on my channel. And I'll see you tomorrow.